This time on Captain Chaos's Laboratory, we're working on the Lemax North Pole, or Welcome to the North Pole piece. Um, <clears throat> this is a piece I was going to need for parts, so if I can't fix it, I'm just going to strip it. But, here's what it looks like. It's a, a tower where this moves, and that's probably about it. Uh, the track, maybe. No, track solid. So just this piece here. And Santa goes up and down. I, I could probably just read the box. Uh, the box just says the thing moves. It literally doesn't even point to Santa, but Santa's on a pivot, so uh, I'm assuming he moves too. So if I plug it in, like so, and I turn the wheel, Nothing. And then if I try and turn this, still nothing. Because the way it's geared up. So, you know, this rocks apparently. The box just says it spins in a circle. So, that's weird. Anyhow, it's completely dead. So, we're going to take it apart see if we can fix it. Most likely, it's a bad motor. Most likely. Um, but... It could also be a bad connection. I know the power supply is good. Um, like the thing back here broke. The wheel feels good, but it could have broke. The circuit board could be fried. Yeah, there's a billion things that cause these to fail. Um, and apparently the penguin pops out of the hole. So we can attack it from the bottom. And we can probably attack it from the top. Now this one's slightly unique. This one's wrapped in fairy lights. And the fairy lights come out. Oh, where do they come out at? They end at the top, right there. So this string wraps all the way around, goes up the ladder to this, which this is the part that's got the problem. I bet you the motor is right below this train track disc. And um, there's supposed to be, oh yeah, there's supposed to be some cars on there. I bet you there's a magnet that goes around and the cars follow the magnet, but it doesn't appear to have the cars, so it is what it is. Um, but the point is, is, this fairy light string, not only is it wrapped, it's fed through all these little brass rings, which means I can't pull the lights out. So it could be a little more tricky to get to this thing. So we're going to start on the bottom. I thought maybe we might be able to lift the track and get underneath the center section, but there's probably a screw somewhere in here that's holding this together and I'm probably just not breaking. And with the tautness of the wire, um, there's a chance it might break the fairy lights. So on the bottom, we have the standard Max mat. so it doesn't uh, turn. So I'm just going to use a narrow spudger to try and get the edge because I can feel it. The edge is only maybe a quarter inch. It's very shallowly adhered all the way around. So like it might have been taken off once before or it's a relatively newer piece because the the hot glue is uh, clear it's not yellowed yet and the hot glue is also holding this mat on so what I'm doing is I'm now using the exacto knife to cut the hot glue because the adhesive from the mat is well, it's easy to come off but tearing it out of the hot glue is a little harder Worst case is I'll just rip the mat off and throw it away. Because if I do keep the piece for any reason, um, I can make a new mat. Yeah, we 
we're just going to tear it off, make life easy. So, and I'll show you, there's apparently some screws. This hot glue has adhered so well to this mat. If you don't want to do this to yours, take your time. Uh, peel it off the normal way. Uh, heat it up if necessary. But if yours is like this one, the hot glue is going to pose a problem. And it's going to get in the way. To replace your mat, over at Michael's, they have this foam stuff with the self-adhesive on the back, just like this does. It just doesn't say Lee Max on it. And you just peel the adhesive off stick it on the table adhesive up, stick your piece on there, kind of rock it around a little bit to make sure the edges have adhered, uh, pat it on the bottom, then take a razor, exacto knife, or scissors, and cut out the around the edge. And then you have a brand new mat. And as I mentioned in previous videos, you can change the color. You can use black, or but let's say, it's a pirate house and you want to stick it next to your water or it's in the water like a pirate ship maybe uh, get it in blue um, if you have uh, green grass where it sits uh, use green that way it blends into your display um, you know it's yours you can customize it any way you want i've done that to a couple i've actually uh you use like sand or brown colored mats for the rocks or the dirt that I have some of my display in when I've had to rip the bottoms off. Or sometimes I get them and they don't have bottoms because they're from a secondhand store like Goodwill or Salvation Army or even estate sales. So There's screws in the bottom. I need to get the mat off of the screws so I can get to the screw heads. I'll show you real quick. There's a screw there and there and there and I think there's one right here and there's probably one right here. So um, the best I found for removing these whether you if you care about them or not is the kind of like a push scraper so it's kind of like a like it makes it more like a chisel and then you can work under the edge and it usually does a decent job ah, if you have a sharp wood chisel that would probably work too I just thought about that use a wood chisel in my job to remove foam off of acrylic and fiberglass. And it works really good. see a screw over here. That's weird. Should have a screw. There it is. Just didn't scrape high enough. It's like a scratcher. Expose my numbers. Alright, let's uh, pull out the electric. Let's get this bottom off. Four screws. Wow, that is 
is absolutely useless. Literally, if you just tear the edges of the mat off, I'm going to show you here in a second, um, you don't have to worry about the screws. It's absolutely useless to try and tear the center off to get to the screws. Here's why. It doesn't do anything. So if you can tear the edges of the mat off, this is where mine was stuck in the glue a lot, and then right here too, you need to break this glue seam, not get to the screws. So you can literally just peel the mat and kind of wrinkle it in so you can get around to the, where the uh, hot glue is. So the screws are covering a bottom that has no point. There's no screws, there's no nothing in here. There's nothing in here that's removable or serviceable. Uh, so yeah, it was a waste of time. Neat. All right, so see how pliable this glue is. I don't know how old this is. I don't know what the box says it. 2018. Box does say it. So this is five years old. So this glue still might be really strong. There we go. I would normally use a spudger, but the spudger it's going to be too fat to get into the seam. So I'm just using a small blade screwdriver or flathead. And then I'm trying to work out the glue from the seam. Careful doing this because if you slip, you're going to drive the screwdriver right through your hand. So that's what I'm doing. Is I'm... There's a lot of it, but maybe I can try a little and see if I can get it to just crack the rest of it off. Or I can cut it. You can heat it up too. But because this is missing pieces, I might just use it as a parts piece. Meaning that try and fix it, find the problem, so that way if you have this one, you can fix it yourself. And then I'll just keep it on the shelf. And if somebody needs a part off of this because they're missing it, like the, the Santa on the board there, I can just take it off of this piece. Either this has been opened or they use really good hot glue. Because usually their hot glue is not this strong. I'm going to switch it over now to a spudger, so it's a little stronger and I don't break my screwdriver. And I'm going to continue cutting through the hot glue. Looks like the uh, reindeer also pivots back and forth. All right, I am going to heat up the, the hot glue. See if I can make this faster. resin piece and this is a plastic base so when you heat it be careful that you don't melt the plastic uh, the temperature for the resin is also can be uh, it's higher but it can still melt 
but you're gonna melt the plastic first. This is where three hands will come in handy. Let's try this. Here's the thing about hot glue that people forget when you heat it up. If you take it out of the heat too fast, it, uh, it re-solidifies into, well, glue. And then your stuff gets stuck. I just realized I got a damn near 300 degree Fahrenheit heat gun on top of a lithium battery. Luckily the shield doesn't get hot because, yeah, that's an explosive hazard right there. Come on. Feels like the spudger might break. This one's really, there we go. This one's really, really glued really well. All right, that side's popped. Let's see if we can keep it separated so it doesn't uh, re-adhere. Work on this side. Personalize my my screwdriver. Damage the button with the heat when it fell onto the metal.
Ah, jeez. All right, I don't know if that was a good cracking or a bad cracking, but there we go. That was a bad one. All right, so parts of it did break. So it's got this four fin thing right here, which fits into a groove up here, which I have no idea what it does. I truly don't. But we're going to figure it out. But the mechanism's all in the bottom. I have no idea why that's there. It's got a square shaft that fits into a square hole that drives everything on top. There's the motor. There's the reindeer and the penguin that should go up and down. So my thing is, I think this motor is bad. So we're gonna unplug it. And then we're gonna plug this back in and see if it uh, comes back to life minus the movement. So this is the motor right here. soundtrack. You know what? Let's fix the motor and see what it does. Also, let's figure out why this thing's got four fins. I'm really curious. So the motor is right here. And I'm going to unplug this top so I can get out of my way. <laughs> so I need to mark these plugs because they're not marked in any fashion or sense of the word. So we're going to... Paint that one black. And let's paint this one red. I do this because they're all the same color plug. And I don't got the schematic on where what goes where. So let's pop out the red. That gives me slightly more room. Now we'll pop out the black. And we're going to pop out the main plug, which I don't need to paint in any color because, well, it's the only plug in here that has five wires. And let's paint this one blue. And there's two more plugs. I'm going to paint this one green. one will just stay white. And now we can get this off of here. And Santa Claus. One right here. And I have no idea what he attached to. We got two more wires that are. Oh, uh, these wires are soldered to the board, right? Of course. But what this allows me at least to do is to slide this over here. Still don't know what he connected to. I don't see any rods or pivots or anything. But there was something. I'll have to see. Again, I don't know what that was either. 
So if you take it apart, be very careful that when it comes apart, that if it comes out at an angle, it's going to break this paddle, which I'll try and figure out what that is here in a couple of minutes. Next, let's get this assembly out so we can change this motor. Screws out of here. Like so it's just a little tight because of the speaker wire. So you could unplug the speaker wire and reroute it. They have it routed under the board to pull up some of the slack, but it's in the way of the motor. There's the belt. screw and this motor screw is stripped out or the motor stripped out one of the two So what I'm trying to do is pull the motor while putting pressure on it to try and see if the screw will catch and unscrew. So it's not working so well with my finger, so now I'm going to pry with the screwdriver as I'm unscrewing it, and voila. So is it a bad screw, or did the motor hole strip out? Uh, the screw's got some thread damage. It might still work for the next one. We'll find out. Yeah, this thing is slimy. So the gearbox grease got into it, like normal. Right, we need the pulley, so we're going to pop that off. Okay. And we're going to get rid of the motor, like so. Grab a new motor. Okay. So the motor is an SRF or RF. 300 CA, 11,400 RPM hobby motor that's usually rated between 3 and 6 volts. You can find them on eBay and Amazon, and they're cheaper on eBay, but they come in a 5 or 10 pack, but it's cheaper than the single or double pack on Amazon right now that I've seen. So just, uh, I'll put a link for Amazon below because the eBay ones always change. Well, sort of the Amazon ones, but not as much. But if you have an old Walkman or um, something that is small that runs on batteries, it has a motor, it's probably got the same motor because it is a standard hobby motor. So I'm wiping the grease off of the area where the motor attaches. So that way the new motor doesn't get full of grease as well. That is the biggest issue with these, is they over-grease them. They get warm, usually in the summer months, even if you don't get to 120 in the shade like we do here in Arizona. And then uh, the grease liquefies and runs inside because, you know, gravity. But if you have... You could even, even, even if you store them in your house, you still risk that chance. Um, just because of how these things are manufactured. Also, using it, the motor gets warm, and when the motor gets warm, it also has the capability of making the grease heat up to the point where it liquefies. Less is more. Less grease means longer life. More life. And there we go. So both screws are in. You know, it had a couple damaged threads. There's enough threads to still catch. Um, I might have a spare screw if I needed it. They're kind of hard to come by. 
The belt, even though it's uh, stuck, is still really pliable. So the belt is still pretty good. But if you're unsure, you can replace the belt while you're here. So I cut heat shrink, slid it on down. And now we're going to strip the wires and solder them. And then we're going to plug everything back in. Well, we'll probably just plug the motor in to make sure the motor turns and turns the shaft. And we still got to figure out what that plastic X is. I don't feel anything up inside unless the... Because this shaft fits right in here, which makes this turn. And when this turns, it makes the penguin penguins move back and forth. So this is all connected. So unless these paddles are moving a magnetic disc for the cars, I have no idea. And I could not feel anything with my fingers. But it doesn't mean it's not there. I'm sure there's a purpose. And I'll show you the bottom as well. So you can see what I'm talking about, how that fits inside. As far as repairing it goes, I'll just clean it, hit it with some super glue, and it should be good. If only two of the paddles engage said magnets, which again, this does not have the cars, I'm not overly concerned. Because like I said, most likely I'm going to use this as a parts piece since it's not complete. But if you're opening yours, don't break it like I did. It wasn't my intent. Because sometimes I fix these and then I give them away on the channel. But only if they're complete. If they're incomplete, I do not give them away. I use them for parts. This one is technically incomplete. And if I don't find a purpose for it, then I am going to just use it for parts. There we go. All right. So it's soldered. Now we'll put the heat shrink over it. If you think your motor's bad before you heat shrink it, make sure that you test your motor. Um, this company I bought from, they have not sent me a defective one yet. But hey, there's always that first time. There's a first time for everything. And the company is on eBay. Because um, again, they're the cheapest. So This is the motor plug. Now I need to put the power port back in so I can actually power this, which is this one right here, which is the one I painted red. Click. Power. Oh, uh, I also need to actually plug in the switch. That probably helps too. Power is great, but without a switch, it it works. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for some reassembly. So let's uh, pop you out. Come on, pop you out. Back over for the minute. So it drops into the standoffs and then fits under the fat part of the impossible gear, fits under the gear that turns this. So you got to make sure that you get it to line up and you don't try and break the teeth when you put it back in. Because I I got lucky, it lined right up. I can't I can't say because I did run it, which turned it. So I must have turned it the exact amount of teeth as it was. There's that. And one last screw. I actually like this piece. I don't do Christmas, but uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll keep this one for myself. Uh, the reason I say that is if any of you out there watch uh, Halloween Villages by Carl, he made a Christmas platform at one of his current events. And my name was drawn, and I won it. 
which is like the fifth one I won from him. And when, as I keep telling him, I'm never going to have to worry about ever cutting foam in my life because I keep winning all the ones that he makes at the uh, local uh, Hallmark store where he builds in person. He doesn't take them home. He builds them and then there's a, you enter your name in a raffle and you get it. And Well, I got a lot of Carl's platforms. Lots of them. Actually, more than I think I have room for. But I don't do Christmas, and the last thing that Carl did was Christmas, and I won it. I knew I was going to as well. I even said that at the beginning of the thing. I said, oh, when he auctions this, or auctions, when he raffles this one off, I'm going to walk away with it. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And so the last thing they auctioned, they gave away, like, or auctioned, raffled. They gave away a dozen things, and the last thing was the platform, and my name was called. Everybody's like, how'd you know? I was like, because it seems to be that way. So, still don't know what this goes to. There's nothing in here that that attaches to. But let me show you what I'm talking about up on the inside. You see that uh, square right there in the middle and then the four fingers? That's what those four fingers are for. Now, when I stuck my pinky in here, I don't feel anything that these paddles touch. So I'm gonna put it together without that fourth finger just to see what happens once I get this rotated in the right direction, because it's, uh, it's 180 degrees out. really thinking somebody took this thing apart and I'll tell you why in a second or I'll show you too. First thing I do is get uh, Donner here or whoever in his freaking hole. He won't get into a stable very well. And while I'm doing, uh, I'm doing that, a shaft keeps popping out of the top. This is kind of a pain in the ass. There's really no way to pull this out straight because of all the pieces, and that's probably why I broke that fin. All right, how are we gonna do this? So these have to line up and go straight in for this to fit, but doing that, oh, I broke his antler. Son of a biscuit. I don't even know where his antler went. No, oh, it's, I think it fell inside maybe. Nope. That's awesome. Well, they shed the rantler, so I'll just say he shed his. What the heck? All right. I'm just going to re glue him back on. Without him in there, I can see up inside and see where that, uh, that plate goes. And I can tell you, I am a couple degrees off. So I wonder if I can just spin it with the actual motor real quick.
It's so close. I still would love to know what those four fingers are for. Nope, I overshot it. have this piece you're gonna have a hell of a time putting it back together. I got the four fingers to start but now I can't get the shaft to line up in the center. So the four fingers are part. I know what the four fingers are for. I do. All right let's see if we get the shaft in. Caught on as the center shaft. <sighs> All right, maybe I can get you to line up. Penguin is lined up. All right, I'm gonna do it and see if I can just get it by spinning. It's in. It's, oh, nope, it's out. I say it was in, it was flush but it just wasn't in far enough to turn the top. Uh, probably because it was at a slight angle. All right. I see what Santa Claus is connected to now. So he could move up and down. Santa Claus connected right here. The... Uh, pin sheared that's fixable and it can be fixed while it's out of the unit or excuse me when it's in the unit all right let's try this again for the umpteenth time fix these all the time and some of them just fight you. trying to feel when this is up against the input to where I can get this thing to drop. I don't think I have it square enough. I think it's probably at a slight angle. Oh. Let's try this. I'm going to put this in first. That and 
let's see if I can just get the shaft to line up here. Maybe that'll make it easier. And I'll go over the mistakes I made, not knowing how to... Ooh, hey, let's, uh, let's do that. Oh, hey. I know why I just let up. Is I forgot to heat shrink the heat shrink, and it touched. So... Maybe that's why I didn't want to go together. I knew I missed the spot step. There we go. So, um, possibly by doing it this way, I can probably see the shaft easier through the reindeer hole. And maybe get this to go back together. That'd be a, a wonderful little treat. So those four fingers actually turn this ring and the center shaft turns this guy. That's really strange. That or this ring has a magnet that I can't feel. Not familiar with this piece at all. Square shaft is tipped a little that way. There's a few pieces out there that use shafts like this and they are difficult to line back up. I, I wish I could give you a damn it. It went in and then it slid out of my hand and well the whole thing came out. So but um, you just gotta keep Tugging away, or tugging away at it, um, you know, whatever the term is, I can't see inside. <laughs> there we go, I got it. Oh, thank God. All right. <sighs> Did the bottom just drop? All right, so let's uh, set her off flat. And motion, motion, penguins popping out. Okay, so how you fix, well, he, you just glue back through the door. Got to figure out what I'm going to do with his missing antler. Uh, that I'll keep as a spare part. I can glue it on later. I wish I knew where his antler went to. I just shot off in the middle of nowhere. So as far as Santa, Santa glues on right there. So you can turn it off when it's at the top, put a dab of glue, and then just set it on top. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna use some really fast drying glue so that way it dries really quickly so we don't have to wait a long period. So right there, where's the closest? Here and like that. So the Gorilla Super Glue Gel, this stuff cures really quick. Like really quick. Like it's scary how fast it cures. Too bad it didn't come with cars. That's actually what I would use to put this piece back on. But I would do it slightly different than just putting a bead. I'd make a gusset. So once it was put on, I'd make a curve of glue to hold it because this actually drives. This is basically a four tooth gear. Now it's a three tooth gear. Try not to break it. So if you're going to take this thing apart. So there's Santa's not moving. 
Um, don't worry about the screws to hold the plate in. Um, as far as taking this thing apart, uh, basically just uh, peel your mat off. Either you do it destructively like I did, or try and be polite and do it slowly and carefully and so on. Leave the four screws in, unless you want a way to put your fingers inside to help hold it for realignment. Once you do that, uh, heat up and or peel out or however your glue comes out, uh, get rid of the hot glue and then carefully try and drop it straight down. You might have to pop off the reindeer from inside the here first before you do it because he sticks out past and he gets caught and then when you try and put it in you're going to break his antler off like you know, I did. So, um, and then pull Santa off. Santa will actually slide off of the pin that he's sitting on. So pop him up. I totally forgot he was there and instead of popping off the pin it broke the plastic below. But as you can see it's fixed. Like I said, it's not too hard to fix certain things. Um, I would use the gel on this, clean it with alcohol, the side that broke, which is this side right here. I would clean both sides with some alcohol. Once it evaporates, I'd put a bead of the gel, put it there, hold it, wait till it cures, then run a bead on each side to make it thicker and let it cure and maybe do it two or three more times so that way it's as structural as it's ever going to be. Then, as far as uh, the penguin, you don't really have to worry about taking him off. This stuff you don't have to take off, and I was going to show you, but I can't now because I have to keep it down. Uh, underneath this snow cap are four screws. All four screws are missing. The only thing holding the snow cap on is the elf that's glued to the side with the ladder. That's how I know somebody's taking this apart. Uh, and that's probably why that glue is so strong. It's relatively new glue. They probably peel the mat back, and that's why the mat stuck in the glue. Because normally the mat's not stuck in the glue. Because the glue is put on, it's dry or cooled before it gets to the point where they put the mats on. Um, so that might be one of the reasons why I had a little bit of a difficulty taking this thing apart, is because it's... Uh, yeah. So... There's a magnet that moves those cars around. It's kind of creepy seeing a screw just dance around the edge. <laughs> but anyway, so if I could find the cars, I could put the cars back on this. I might keep it uh, and put it in my display, not my Halloween display. I was going to make a little miniature Christmas display for this, uh, this coming Christmas. And I like the colors. I like the lights. It doesn't look bad. And um, it's got a huge music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the music so we can hear its entire musical run from the start. So I'm going to turn it off so it goes back to zero. And then I'm going to turn it back on. And I'm going to go turn off the lights so we can see what this thing looks like in the dark. I might have a hard time tipping it because I haven't glued it together yet. But we're going to see what we can do to make it uh, so you can see the different angles. Because these two lights here are probably going to blind the camera once I turn the lights off. And that one too. Uh, so, here we go.
completed. the lighting on this piece. I'm not a Christmas guy. I don't mind Christmas. I just don't collect the village. And I actually do like the lighting because the lighting changes a little bit with the beat of the music. And it uh, has decent sound. Decent soundtrack. This light illuminates into the penguin's hole, but you don't really see the penguin coming out of the top. I think the angle of the dangles off. These should be tipped in a hair so you can see the seals and candy canes and bears and stuff go around like that. This one's illuminating where, let's see. This one here is illuminating where the reindeer head would be out and it'd be moving back and forth. But uh, yeah, it's not a bad looking piece. Might put it on the display platform I got from Carl where it has a nice uh, mountain in the background that Carl did with highlights of blue to indicate ice. So, uh, I don't know about the cars. I don't know if I'll be able to find them. Probably not. I could just put some dancing screws on there. No, I could find any small thing that's Christmas related and put it on there. Uh, maybe even the dead man's mind. Maybe I can take the cars off of that and repaint them and remove the figures. Uh, Cause I do have a couple of those. Uh, Cause like Shaw, this is just a magnet. There's just a set of magnets in here. There's probably two, most of them are. I'm gonna turn the light back on so we're gonna lose the pretty lights. So, on the box, oh, wait, 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 oh, I think I found the cars. Oh, never mind. Kind of goes weird. Maybe I have it on backwards. Let's try it that way. Got a car crash. Yeah, that one doesn't just like to spin very well. Is it supposed to have three cars? Yeah. I think it's supposed to have three. You barely see the third one in the picture on the box, so it's missing a car. Yeah. I can't complain for free. And uh, it just cost me time and a motor and broke a couple of small things because I forgot about Santa and I didn't think the reindeer was going to be a problem. And I didn't realize I had a uh, fins on the inside because that's the first time I've seen them do that. Makes sense. Does what it's supposed to do. So again, recap. If it's yours, hopefully you have all the screws under here. I can replace those. I have hoppy screws laying all over my bench. Um, but all four are missing. So again, this cap is loose. And that's because the screws are missing and it's held on right here by the elf in the ladder. The bottom peel or remove, depending on if you want to make it pretty or not. Then um, uh, take the hot glue, cut it out, heat it up, or if it's really crappy, just break it off. Take the reindeer off. He's just glued on. You can see the glue right there. Um, if you can't get him off with your fingers, you know, those pliers, get in there and just wiggle it off until he breaks free so you don't break his antler like I did. <coughs> don't forget about Santa again. It should just drop relatively straight out. Now the wires aren't long enough as you saw, so if you have to move this over, mark the wires. Um, you saw I use red, green, blue, and black, and that left me with two white ones. A white one on this board, and a white one on this board, which is the power, or excuse me, the uh, motor. Uh, the power I painted red, so I know it's power, red, hot. You know. uh, the five-prong wire, which comes from the switch, 
I don't paint because it's the only five prong wire ever on these circuit boards. So you don't have to do anything with it. Then um, twist this over because the two wires that go to the fairy lights are not removable. They're soldered unless you want to cut them and reconnect them or desolder them. Fix your motor, fix your belt, fix your gear, whatever the heck is broken on yours. Uh, it's probably going to be a motor first, followed by the belt, and then a gear. Hopefully it's not a gear, because if it's an impossible gear, they are replaceable now, but they're just expensive. And they don't come in standard gear kits. Then reverse the process. Now, I would recommend removing the shaft like I did when I finally got to that point. Sticking it into the bottom, so the four fingers, in my case three, line up with the drive mechanism here. Then, looking through the hole for where the deer goes, eyeball it and get that shaft to line up into the square hole in the bottom. And then work it in, make sure it's flush, set it down flush, and then fire it up, make sure it doesn't bind, crack, make a funny sound, because then you know something's out of alignment. Uh, in the dark, you might have saw me take this and stick it under. That's because when I was moving my one finger, um, the bottom started of the tip, so this allowed to push it up so I could pull my finger out and then slide this back out from underneath it. So you might have to do that with yours. This is another reason I think it was worked on is because I've been finding these little pieces of paper stuck all over where the seam is. I don't think Lee Max forgot to remove paper. I think the paper is from a repair or an attempted repair. So it, it is what it is. So now I just got to heat up my glue gun. So I'm gonna turn it on right now, right there and glue the bottom back on. I'm not gonna deal with this right now. I'm just gonna put this in the box in its little compartment right there. And then I'm gonna glue him on at the same time. And I'll probably just get some tan paint and paint the mark on his head from where his antler's gone and just say he lost an antler. You know, reindeers lose antlers all the time when they fight or when they shed them. So it's, uh, it's, it's nature. So, bring on the rest of the lights. So, that concludes the Lee Max uh, Welcome to the North Pole. Uh, is that what it's actually called? No, it's called the North Pole Tower. So, the Lee Max North Pole Tower. So, hopefully, this helps you if you have it. It's a nice looking piece. Um, I'm assuming it came with three cars, because in the picture it's hard to tell, but I'll slide it in. We'll carefully slide this over. I see a car glare. Car here. Car here. You know, it looks like that's a car right there. Sticking out from behind that little red pointy thing. So... So they use the same picture on the front with the little red pointy thing. And then on the paper instructions. They only ever show two full cars, but then there's a little square right there which is the same on the back side. So I don't know. If you have this piece, you can put in the comments below if it came with three or two cars. Because there's a magnet right here. But that in a case to me would have three. See? So. Oop. Now we're gonna push the screw around. Anyhow, uh, those are the little hobby screws I was talking about that I can screw up under the edge where the screws are missing. But there you go. Well, thanks for watching this one. A little over an hour here uh, in getting this thing apart and back together and broken in the middle. But before I finish my assembly, I'm going to remove this piece of rubber from here, the foam rubber, uh, clean it up after I hot glue this on because my hot glue should be hot. It is. And then... Um, put a new mat on it. So thanks for watching till the next one.